Hello again guys. Uh, I'm gonna continue this topic that we were working last class, last lecture. And last lecture, uh, basically what we did was that we came here and we said, oh, let's work this problem out. What is the shear moment diagrams? And, and before doing shear moment diagrams, we're gonna find the relation between load, shear, and moment. And then we took a part of the beam in any dimension. The part of the beam was this, which it happened that it was the Snoopy load and then we did this load here and we did summation of forces and we found that the shear was the integral of w dx and then we did moment with respect to the ear snoopy's ear and it was here snoopy's ear and then we did moment with respect to that point and we went through the moment and we found the relation that says that the moment is the integral of v dx and the low the shear is the integral of the load times dx. Uh, I strongly suggest you to go back and review what we did last time because this relation is important. I know it's theoretical, but at least it's important for you to have that uh, background knowledge. Uh, and then we, st I start by proposing this example and I say let's draw the shear moment diagrams and let's do that in three different methods. Okay, this is the first thing that you have to do. The first thing that you have to do when you have to she uh, draw a shear moment diagram and please pay attention, please do it. If you follow this method, I highly, highly doubt that you're gonna have any problem with the shear moment diagrams. But you have to start from the beginning and do as I said. The first thing that you do is and when you draw a shear moment diagram, of course, you have to calculate reactions in most of the cases, if not all, all the cases, if not. Uh, but the first thing that I would like you to do is you draw a vertical line at the beginning and a vertical line at the end. After you do that, you're gonna look for something that I call uh, points of interest or regions of interest. regions of interest and those regions of interest basically uh, those regions of those regions of interest what they are are a uh, they are called discontinuities discontinuities I call them regions of interest or points of interest but they are called discontinuities those discontinuities are those points where first you have a concentrated load or a concentrated moment. Second, of course at the beginning and at the end is, uh, is important. Second, where a distributed load begins or ends or and also ends. Wherever you have intermediate supports Whenever you have a change in materials, whenever you have a change in cross-sectional area, whenever you have internal supports, like a hinge, in other words, whatever you have a change, those are. In this case it's really easy because you only have the beginning, the end, and this point C because it's the beginning of the load. So I'm going to draw another vertical line over there. And after you have that, I draw two or three horizontal lines. If I have axial diagram, one line for the axial. If I don't have axial diagram, I'm going to draw it. an axial, a uh, one line for the shear, which I'm going to be plotting in terms of the length another line for the moment which I'm gonna be plotting here in this part. This is the first thing that you do and this is really important that you follow it step by step. Now, next step, calculate reactions. Let's calculate the reactions. External reactions, we need those reactions. How do we calculate those reactions? I don't know, you know that better than I do. This is a pin, so it's gonna be AY and AX and this is a roller, BY, 
And then I'm gonna do summation of moments at A. Why summation of moments at A? I have talked about this for too long now. Summation of moments at A equals zero. Then what do you have? You have the force coming from this distributed load. The value is gonna be 1.5 times two. And it's gonna be located at the center, which is one, because it's a rectangular load. So it's negative because if I apply the load, it's gonna be doing that negative 1.5 times 2 that's the value of the load times the distance from here 2 plus 1 and this by if I apply the load is going to rotate in this way so it's going to be plus by times 4 equals 0 and from here I can solve for by by is going to be equal this is 3 3 times 3 is 9 9 divided by 4 pass this to the other side positive by is going to be 2.25 kilonewton and then after that you can do summation of summation of forces in y equals 0 then you have a y minus this force 1.5 times 2 plus b y equals 0 b y remember is 2.25 negative 3 pass it to the other side 3 minus 2.25 pass it to the other side also this is equal to 0 0.75 kilonewton a y equals 0 0.75 kilonewton there you go now we have the reactions what I do and I don't have problems so I recommend you to do it and I learn it good is that you do the same thing you put the force here now and you put here the value of the force this is 0 0.75 kilonewton and you put the value here of the force 2.25 kilonewton that's what I will do in this part now I didn't do summation of forces in X here but you can do it and then you get AX nothing else equals 0 so AX in my language doesn't exist it could but it doesn't okay now these regions of interest as I described them before are really important because those regions of interest are going to be the ones that are going to tell me uh, where I do the sections I'm gonna start doing the sections the first method that we're gonna be working here is the method of sections there you go the method of the sections first thing first I'm gonna make a section here that's the first part and I'm gonna say from A to C or from 0 is smaller equal than X smaller equal, is smaller and equal than 2 smaller or equal <laughs> I'm speaking Spanish here is smaller or equal than X smaller than 2 and I'm gonna copy whatever I have there and whatever I have there is that section. Let me see if I'm doing it in this way first. Yes. I just want to keep this homogeneity here. Okay. So my first section is going to be my beam is this, and I'm going to make a section here in this part. This distance is going to be x. Now it's not 2 because I'm not looking for the value at c. I'm looking for any value between 0 and 2. The value for my reaction here is 0 0.75. And here at this end, I'm going to have the three reactions. This is going to be V, and this is going to be M. And I'm not going to put actual force because I know there's no actual force. So I'm going to keep this like that. Once you have that, you say summation of forces in Y. Remember, if the beam is in equilibrium, every portion of the beam should be in equilibrium summation of forces in a y equals 0 so you have 0 0.75 minus v equals 0 v equals 0 0.75 kilonewton that means that at the beginning for v when x equals 0 v is 0 0.75 and when v equals at the end of the span 2 B is also 0 0.75. It doesn't change, it's a constant, you see? Then I go to my diagram and I say, oh, at 0, it's 0 0.75. At 2, it's 0 0.75. And because this is a constant, what I'm going to have here is a constant. 
is the equation of a horizontal line, like that. Now, one of the things that I like to do is I like to study this support, and that benefits me for everything else. So I go to this support at A, and I say, OK, at A, I find the first thing that I find is a reaction, is a concentrated force. And remember what I explained before, I say, whatever you have a concentrated force, your shear diagram is going to suffer a jump in the same direction of the load and in the same amount of the value of the load. Yes, I say that before. And if you pay attention to my previous lecture, you will see that. And I say also, for now, I know you don't know what I'm saying, but when we go to shear moment diagram, you will know what I'm saying. This is the moment that I, I was referring to. So in this part here, this is a concentrated load. That means that my load starts from zero here, my shear diagram, and find that load, which is going to make this point jump in the same direction up and in the same value, 0 0.75. That's why that value is 0 0.75 there. OK, now I go to the point C. You're going to do point, span, and then you check the point. And then you're looking at the point C, and you look at the at the shear diagram and you ask yourself this question is there any concentrated shear meaning in this case vertical load at C if the answer is no like in this case because you don't have any concentrated load you have the beginning of the distributed load no that means that the load doesn't change doesn't change this is really easy to do you do it in your mind you don't have to write it down for the method of the sections and now you go to CD when you go to CD span CD then uh, there are several methods of doing this even though I'm analyzing CD I'm gonna copy everything from A to there this is my reaction at A, 0 0.75. This distance is 2. This value of the distributed load here is 1.5 kilonewton per meter. And the distance from here to here is x. Remember x because this the roller should be somewhere here. And the total distance from here to here should be 2. But I'm cutting it at this point. So if this is, this is the point that I'm making the cut, then I'm going to have also a v and a moment and the method is the same method you just do summation of forces in y equals zero and when you do summation of forces in y equals zero then you have 0 0.75 minus what is the value of this load this load is applied here at this point what is the value of that load 1.5 times the base x and what is the distance from here to here or from here to here well, if this is a rectangle and the distance from here to here is x, this distance is x divided by 2 because it's the half of the base. So 0.75 minus 1.5x minus v equals 0. And from here you can solve v. And say v, pass it to the other side, is 0 0.75 minus 1.5x. Now you evaluate this as x is changing. Be careful because if I draw everything from the beginning, from here, that doesn't mean that x starts from 0 to 4. x starts from here. This is where I'm measuring x from. And this point is 0 and the end point is 2. So x starts from 0 to 2 and I say for v when x equals 0, then this is going to be what? 0 0.75 minus 1.5 times 0, which is 0 0.75. That makes sense. What makes sense? Because we said that this point shouldn't change. There's nothing concentrated there. And V of 2 at the end of the span, beginning of the span, end of the span, 0 0.75 minus 1.5 times 2. This is equal negative 2.25 kilonewton. 2.25 kilonewton negative that means that this value is negative 2.25 kilonewton here one of the things that I do is I put my units here so I don't have to repeat that every time okay now I'm here negative 2.25 0 and then I, I I see this equation here this is the equation of a straight line y-intercept slope negative slope is a straight line 
So that means that these two points have to be connected together by a straight line. And now I go to this point here. And once I go to this point, I ask myself that question also at the point B. Point B. Is there any concentrated force at B? You know, the answer is yes because this is a concentrated force, the reaction. Yes, there's a concentrated force here. That concentrated force is 2.25. That means that I'm here at negative 2.25 and that force is gonna push this up in the same direction of the load and in the same value of the load, negative 2.25 is gonna be pushed up to zero. And when this thing closes, you are entitled to say yes. But that yes is a small yes. It's a yes like saying, I'm going good, going good. Not there yet, I'm going good. You know, this means that your problem might be correct. It doesn't mean that it's correct. It means that might be correct. However, if that thing doesn't close in zero there, you're wrong. So once again, sorry brother. Go back and start again. Now, let's do the moment. Let's do the moment. Wait a moment. Okay, let's do the moment. And I'm gonna do the moment for the same example that I was doing here, now, moment diagram. I'm gonna go for the same section, A to C, moment, from A to C, and I'm gonna do summation of moments. Where you do the summation of moments is up to you. I'm gonna do the summation of moments at this end, at this end. So if this is A, because this is the point A, I'm gonna call that point over there like, I don't know, A prime. And I'm gonna make the summation of moments at A prime equals zero in that way. Uh, so if I do this summation of moments A prime equals zero at this point, then I'm going to have 0 0.75 times this. What is this? Negative 0, uh, 0 0.75 x, negative. Good, negative, in that way. Yes, and this m, I don't have anything else. Plus m equals zero. So M is gonna be equal to 0 0.75 X. That's my moment equation. That means that for M of zero, when X equals zero, the moment is zero. And at the end of the span, remember I'm here, the distance is two. So M of two is gonna be 0 0.75 times two, which is gonna be 1.5 kilonewton meter. Put units, put units. Units are important. So I'm there. 1.5 kilonewton. Once again, it starts in zero. You can ask yourself the question, is there any concentrated moment at this point? And the answer is, nope, there's not. Because I don't see any moment, this is a pin. How come it's gonna have a moment? So it starts in zero. And it's correct because it starts in zero here. Now the equation is a straight line and the final point is 1.5. 1.5 is there. A straight line, straight line. Now, uh, I'm gonna go to the other point, C, and then at point C, you're gonna ask yourself the question, is there any concentrated moment? Is there any concentrated moment? Because we're working with moments at C. No, there's not any concentrated moment. Keep going, don't do anything else. Now go to C, B span CB and the span CB is span CB where is my span CB nobody moves here span CB this is, oh C I put here CD <laughs> correct that please rewind and correct that that CB okay span CB I know there's gonna be a bunch of layers saying oh he messed up he put CD there yeah I did that on purpose just you know to see if you were paying attention okay CB if I go here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do summation of moments, and I'm gonna do that at this point, which I'm gonna call B prime. I don't know. 
b prime and that has to be zero this is correct so if I do summation on moments here I start with this one this is negative point rotation negative negative 0 0.75 multiplied by the distance what is the distance from here to here 2 plus x 2 plus x that sounds like somebody is uh, rooting for somebody 2 plus x 2 plus x so you do 0 0.75 times 2 plus x and then you have this force which is plus one the force is 1.5 x and the distance is half of the distance half of the base which we said it was x divided by 2 plus this m equals 0 and then we solve for this and then we have negative 0 0.75 times 2 is negative uh, uh, negative 1.5 and minus 0 0.75 x plus this is x times x divided by 2 is x squared divided by 2 1.5 0 0.75 because 1.5 divided by 2 is 0 0.75 x squared plus m equals 0 or m equals pass this to the other side negative 0 0.75 x squared plus 0 0.75 x plus 1.5 that's my equation for moment now I do the same thing that I did before and I'm gonna evaluate uh, this and I'm going to say, okay, for x equals 0 at the beginning of the span, that's 0. Remember, and at the end of the span is going to be 2. So for x equals 0, this is going to be equals to 0, 0, 1.5. And for x equals 2 at the end of the span, this is going to be negative... 0 0.75 x squared 0.75 this is negative 3 negative 3 yes this is negative 3 negative 3 plus 0 I'm going to put it by steps. Negative 0 0.75 times 2 squared plus 0 0.75 times 2 plus 1.5. This is 4, 3. At 2, the moment is 3. Negative 3 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 equals 0. So moment at Two equals zero a moment at one equals 1.5 kilonewton meter meaning at this point at this point the moment should be 1.5 which is correct and at this point the moment should be zero which is also correct now how this equation works how is this equation working here how what is this type of equation what type of equation is is that it's a parabola how is that parabola and then people say frowny face happy face uh, well certainly you can calculate those points right you can calculate those points and you can calculate how the equation is going to be now one of the important things that that, uh, that you have to uh, see is what is the shape of that parabola I know that the shape of that parabola is going to be like that there's going to be a maximum or a minimum at this point and then it's going to come in this way I know that and I should calculate how much is this point here and you can calculate that you can calculate the inflection points and you can do a bunch of other things with this problem but what I'm gonna do oh, by the way when this closes in zero you are entitled to a big yes because that means that your problem is correct and you say yes now how do you do this here how do you do this here how do you calculate these points you are mathematicians you are better mathematicians than I am so you can perfectly go and do this uh, but if you are interested which I think that you might be 
please follow me in the next video exactly the next video I'm gonna record it I have a meeting now but I'm gonna record it in about one hour and I'm gonna post it also so that video uh, I'm gonna do the same method the same problem and I'm gonna solve it by the method of the integrals and then I'm gonna solve it by the method of the areas see you in the next video I was planning on doing it now but I'm sorry I have a meeting and you should probably hear the reminder of the meeting during the video before so I'm not lying to you see you later guys